Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on the cardiac cycle. This video is relevant for A-level biology as well as BTEC Applied Science Unit 5, which is the exam-based unit normally sat in the extended diploma second year. For both of these courses, you have to be able to explain what the cardiac cycle is in terms of atrial systole, ventricular systole and diastole. You need to explain the opening and the closing of the valves in the heart in terms of different pressures at different stages. And you also need to look at data relating to pressure and volume changes in the cardiac cycle. So that's basically what I'm covering in today's video. So the heart pumps with alternate contractions and relaxations. The contractions are called systole and the relaxations are known as diastole. The heartbeat occurs in a cycle involving three stages, atrial systole, ventricular systole and complete diastole. This rhythmic sequence of contractions and relaxations keep blood continually circulating around the body. The volume of blood and pressure changes in the atrium and the ventricles as they contract and relax. The pressure changes in the heart chambers are generated by the cycle of contraction and relaxation, and they're responsible for the blood movement and cause the heart valves to open and close. The valves are also there to prevent backflow of blood. For a heart that beats at around 75 beats per minute, one cardiac cycle duration is around 0.8 seconds for all three of those stages. So if we talk about these three stages in order, in your textbooks you may find that these stages come in different orders. Remember it's a cycle, so you may start off in the ventricular systole and then move to diastole, then through to atrial systole. I'm going to start off with diastole. This is a complete relaxation of the heart, and this is a short period of relaxation. Over here highlighted show you the semilunar valves closed to prevent backflow into the ventricles. About 70% of the blood from the atria will fall passively into the ventricles. It's during the last third of ventricular filling that the atria will contract. The contraction of the atrial walls will force the bicuspid and tricuspid valves to open as the pressure is greater in the atria, so the valves are therefore forced open to allow blood to flow into the ventricles, as you can see is highlighted on the video now. The next part of the cardiac cycle is ventricular systole, highlighted here. This is where the atria are completely relaxed, but the ventricles at the bottom of the heart have started to contract. Blood is pumped from the ventricles into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The aorta here is this part over here, highlighted in the purple, and the pulmonary artery is this part over here, going across. The start of ventricular contraction coincides with the first heart sound, and the first heart sound is caused by the atrioventricular valves closing. These have to close because we want to prevent backflow back into the atria. As the ventricular pressure builds, the semilunar valves are forced open, and this allows blood to flow out of the heart. This part of the video is designed to give you some key words and revision aids for the cardiac cycle. Please feel free to pause the video to write down some notes for your own revision. This animation here should help you understand and visualize the beating part of the heart. You can see that the atria are both contracting at the same time and that allows blood to be pushed into the ventricles and shortly after the ventricles also contract. Please note that the left side of the heart will always contract harder to create more pressure. The left side is the side of the heart that will pump oxygenated blood around the body. So it is really important that the left side contracts harder. Please also note when the valves are opening and closing. As the atrial contraction happens, the valves between the atria and the ventricles will open. As the ventricles contract, the AV valves will close and the semilunar valves will open. This graph here is one that you might need to learn for the exam. You can see it shows the cardiac cycle events on, and the ECG. First of all, you have to understand what the ECG shows. So it's there to show you the impulse spreading through the heart when it's contracting. You can see the events of the ECG directly correspond to various pressure and volume changes. The pressure graphs are on the top showing the left ventricular pressure and the aortic pressure and the volume graph is on the bottom showing the left ventricular volume.
When a graph like this is presented, it usually only documents the left side as this is the side that pumps oxygenated blood. So when we look at this graph, you'll have to be able to label up areas where the valves open or close. This will demonstrate that you understand the cardiac cycle. In order to really understand what's going on, we need to look at each part of the graph. If we start with the aortic pressure, which is the black line at the top being highlighted by this red dot as I move my mouse over it, we can see that the aortic pressure increases just after ventricular pressure has increased. This makes sense as the blood from the ventricles will go into the aorta, causing this pressure increase. The aortic pressure can only increase when the semilunar valves are open. These are the valves by the opening of the aorta. Later on in the graph over here, where my red dot is, we see the pressure dipping. So this is the area where the semilunar valves will have to close. This is to prevent backflow. Next, we look at the graph with the left ventricular pressure. So we're looking at this dark blue line over here, the one that's slightly thicker. We can see that it starts to increase over here. And this is where the AV valves have to close. As the pressure in the left ventricles is increasing, the AV valves have to close at that stage to prevent the blood going back up the atria. When the pressure increases in the ventricles, they're going into systole, so they're actually contracting at this stage. Later, we see the pressure dip as we go over this stage over here. We know at this stage, as the pressure dips, the AV valves will ensure that they open. So we're talking about the bottom bit over here. This will allow blood to flow back into the ventricles. The next part I want you to look at is this volume graph over here, the one that's slightly thinner line, and that's showing the left ventricular volume going up and down. We can see at the time when the AV valves open, the left ventricular volume is increasing. So that makes sense that the valves are open, the blood is flowing from the atria into the ventricles. Later in the graph, we can see the volume dipping over here, or it's the same over here. This shows two cardiac cycles, by the way. So this volume is the same replication over here because of the two separate cardiac cycles taking place. So whenever this volume is dipping, this coincides with the pressure in the ventricles increasing. That makes sense because as the pressure in the ventricles increase, the blood is leaving the ventricles, so therefore the volume decreases. Next, I have a few past paper questions. This first one shows the volume graph doing two cardiac cycles. The question asks you to complete the table to show when the valves are closing and opening. So the first part, we know that the semilunar valve will open at this stage over here. And we know that because the volume of the ventricle is going down, the fact that the semilunar valve opens at number two will decrease the volume. So that's stage two. The semilunar valve will open at stage two, and that's what you'd write down in the box. The semilunar valve will close at stage three over here because the volume of the ventricle has gone right down low. So the valve will close at stage three. And remember, it needs to close to prevent the back flow. Next, we've got the AV valve. The atrioventricular valve will open when the volume is at its lowest. So it has to be after the semilunar valve has closed. So that's stage four. And therefore, the atrioventricular valve will also close at stage one. And this is to prevent the flow of blood backwards. The next question asks you to explain in terms of pressure why the semilunar valves open. It's only one mark, so you can afford to be pretty brief about it. We know that the valves will open when the pressure before the valve is greater, which then pushes it open. We also know that semilunar valves are between the ventricles and the aorta or the pulmonary artery. So you can say that the pressure is greater below the valve or the pressure is greater in the ventricle than in the artery. The next question shows a boxy diagram of the heart as seen from the front. The first part asks you to say which vessels A to D contain oxygenated blood. So we need to look at the diagram and ascertain which side is the left and which one is the right. The vessels from the left will be the ones which are oxygenated. The question says that the diagram is seen from the front, so we know that this side over here will be the left side. So that means vessels C and D must be the oxygenated vessels. The next part says that the pressure in vessel C is higher than the pressure in vessel B, and you're asked to explain what causes this difference in pressure. It's only one mark. 
So we know that vessel C is connected to the left side. And from the previous studies of the heart, you should be aware that the left side has thicker muscle. So that will contract more forcefully and therefore it generates a higher pressure. The second part of the question asks what the diagram suggests about the pressure in the atria compared to the pressure in the ventricles. This is for two marks. We need to refer back to the diagram for this. It shows in the diagram that the AV valves over here are open and we know they're open because there's a gap over here and they're pointing in this direction. So the answer will expect us to say that the pressure in the atria must be higher as the AV valves are open. OK, so that's all I have for you for now. I hope that clears up any confusion about the cardiac cycle. Please let me know if you've got any questions by leaving me a comment and making sure that you share this video with anyone else who might find it useful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.